Now, if you were to buy this thing on looks alone, I know you're far too discriminating to ever do that, but let's just pretend. Maybe this angle will sell you. I don't know about you, but I think that looks pretty freaking cool. Those fire blackened pot supports up top. You turn the thing upside down, it looks like one of those 1950s rocket ships. <laughs> Something out of the movie Men in Black, maybe. All right, enough messing around. It does, it looks like a rocket ship to me. No rocket ship, it is, you guessed it, from the title, the Kelly Kettle. You are, of course, watching the Nut and Fancy Project. This will be a survival kit, I don't know, outdoor equipment item review for your systems. I would like to thank Mr. Jeff Laufer for introducing me to the Kelly Kettle. Heretofore, I had no idea what this thing was about, never heard of it, never researched it. And so this summer, I went out on about five different expeditions after I secured a couple for this tabletop review. Now, perhaps you missed our in-show review of the Kelly Kettle. That was with Mr. Laufer, the CEO of Kelly Kettle. And I, at that point, I just had to go off of what Laufer was saying, that it rocked. And by looking at it and knowing what I know about outdoor cooking, uh, boiling water in the outdoors, backpacking, all that stuff, even then, I was very intrigued. It seemed like a system that worked, but I wasn't sure until I tested it myself. So all the testing is complete. I'm gonna roll all the data into this tabletop review. I'm gonna show you in-field footage as I cooked and boiled water with a Kelly kettle. And the bottom line is this, if you're in a hurry, just buy it. Seriously, it's that good. It's not perfect. Definitely not perfect. It has some distinct downsides and you will hear about them here in this tabletop review. I always give you guys the truth, my TMPers, you know that. But in the end, its pros, its advantages far outweigh the negatives of the Kelly Kettle. Now, like I said earlier, maybe you never saw that in-show review of the Kelly Kettle. You have no idea what it is. Let me tell you, in a nutshell. Let me rephrase that. In a nut and shell, let me tell you. It's a way to boil water fast with natural fuel. And you might do a little bit of cooking with it. But to me, it is primarily a water boiler and at that task it freaking rocks the kelly kettle this is its construction right here opening up the instructions and you'll see that it has a double wall where the water is contained it has a chimney the hollow portion here a spout with a silicone stopper on a stainless steel chain and that's it oh yeah you got a fire base there too this thing right here in its essence, that is the Kelly Kettle. Let me go over a very brief history of this thing. You ready? It was invented in Ireland by the Kelly family. There you go. There's your history. Look more up if you're interested in their website. That's all I'm telling you. The point being is that it's been around a long time. And in my mind, I think it's been forgotten with modern innovations and left by the wayside. That's why I want to promote it on my channel and I think it's very proven. I think it's always had a hardcore group of enthusiasts that have used the Kelly Kettle over the years. But like I said, in recent decades, maybe recent years, uh, I don't know, a lot of people didn't know about it. I surely didn't know about it, and I've been in the backpacking community, the outdoor community, the survival community for decades and decades. So first what I'm gonna do is show you the different models. At least I have two on the table. I'll discuss the different materials, the quality, the workmanship, and then we're gonna get in a little interesting discussion about philosophy of use. You guys will like that. I'll talk about the ups, the downs, and we'll end it with some considerations in using the Kelly Kettle that I found. I might forget some stuff, whatever, you know how that rolls. This is my favorite model right here. This is the Scout model, a stainless steel version. It also comes in aluminum. They all come in aluminum, I think. Uh, not all of them, some do. But this is a stainless steel one, and oddly enough, I would recommend the stainless version for yourself as well. Why is that? Well, uh, I don't like drinking out of aluminum directly. I think there are some studies that say that might, might, might contribute to Alzheimer's. I have a hard enough time remembering everything. I don't need that. More importantly, cleaning and maintaining an aluminum 
cook set is a pain in the butt, speaking from my Boy Scouting days. Oh my gosh, especially when you're working with direct fire. Charcoal, soot that can get on the side of the metal. Good luck trying to get your aluminum clean. Stainless, you can do it. You can see here, I did just that. We'll talk about maintenance of it here as the video progresses. Stainless steel, even though it's gonna be heavier, I think will be more durable and it's good weight. Okay, if you're going to use it for a base camp style of cooking or in a, uh, let me say, a home-based survival system, I would recommend the base camp version, this one right here. It is going to be much heavier, not much heavier, but 2 pounds, 11 ounces. It holds a lot more at 50 ounces. This thing rocks, though, the base camp, 50 ounces. If you can fit this into your system, whatever it is, it's a stationary, uh, non-mobile system, this might be the way to go. But my overall favorite trekker right here okay and i told you the way uh, let me talk about this real quick and some guys sensing my enthusiasm about the kelly kettle may say well Dutton, are you going to just totally pitch this your beloved msr pocket rocket or other lightweight backpackable cartridge stoves and the answer is absolutely not <laughs> no way dude no freaking way because this is very size efficient for a lot of different systems. Yes, it has downsides, we'll talk about that. But it's shorter and that is advantageous when we're cooking, it won't tip over as easily, it's more compact, fits in your system easily, and of course it's lighter weight. With a 220 gram cartridge, the MSR Pocket Rocket is about 17 ounces. Again, with this, uh, without the pot, one pound 13 for the stainless steel trekker, so no, I'm not getting rid of this. And this is a much better cooking device because it has adjustable flame, adjustable simmer. Uh, it's just a great system, this one, the pocket rocket. And it's not just a pocket rocket, anyone's like that. So I want to answer that question because some guys may think I'm abandoning that system. No way. All right, so Trekker, my favorite model, and that will take us already into philosophy of use discussion. How are you going to use this thing? Well, to me, I think it is an ideal long range water boiler. Well, it can cook too, nothing fancy. I know it can, but I don't think, and in my experience, I didn't find it to be a great cooker. That's because the heat source is gonna be clear down here, and I didn't really explain this too well. Let me do that now for people who are new to Kelly Kettle. This is your fire base. Okay, so you'll set the, and you don't have to use these pot supports, you can take those off. This is in the simplest form how the Kelly Kettle works. You place it right here, you put fuel, that is sticks, tender, anything dry, combustible, down here and you'll light it and that heat and the chimney effect accelerates the burn, you get boiling water in about four to five minutes, what I found out. And that's at high elevation, granted in the summertime. That's pretty darn quick, burning twigs. And I stoked it from the bottom here, like feeding it through here, seeing, you know, just experimenting, learning about it, see what works best. And I think, like Kelly Kettle suggests, it's feeding it from the top of the chimney. Be careful when you do that, though, because you can get a lot of heat coming out here, and you can actually get scorched on those fingers, right? So back to philosophy of use. Knowing that it takes natural fuel, okay, and you don't need this, a cartridge, this is a superior long range, long distance water boiler, perhaps cooker. We'll talk a little bit more about that, the cooking aspect of the Kelly kettle. Because you have, I don't know, fuel wherever you go. Even in the winter time, it's not that hard to break into some standing deadwood, find something that's a sucker will burn, bang. Hot water for your soups, for your coffee, for your hot chocolate, for your freeze dried meals. And I really want to foot stomp that I think the Kelly Kettle is a great companion to a freeze-dried meal system, getting back to the base camp. So you're at your homestead, wherever that is, you have a freeze-dried meal system, which I highly recommend because it stores forever, it's lightweight, it's portable. They're actually pretty good nowadays. How are you gonna boil, wa boil water for it? Kelly Kettle, maybe a base camp, easily. You don't have to store cartridges, the expensive cartridges. Just use whatever wood you can find, whatever natural fuel you can put in it. That is a huge selling point for the Kelly Kettle in my book. Is that it is a both a ultra oh can't speak ultra efficient and very let's say economical cooking method for boiling water. First and foremost, 
philosophy of use. And I did say long range stove. And here's what I mean by that. I want to spend just a second on this. I love this thing. And I love a lot of others like it that use a cartridge system that can really put out the BTUs that are very reliable, even in cold weather. That's right. In cold weather, this thing has not let me down. Sometimes I put uh, coals under there to warm the cartridge up. I know without exploding it, relax. Happens, man. I mean, it's freaking 10 below, zero, 20 below. You have to do what you got to do. But the thing is, sooner or later, that cartridge is going to give out. Now you have to pack it out too, so that's extra weight. How are you going to keep you know, feeding your MSR pocket rocket on a long distance journey? Maybe it's the summertime. You're just doing, I don't know, 200 miles of backpacking through whatever area in the United States, overseas. The Kelly Kettle actually, even though it's a heavier system, will beat it when you're primarily boiling water. From what I know now. Because you're not carrying a bunch of heavy cartridges. And it boils water like the Dickens. It's outstanding. Very efficient. That's what I mean by long distance stove or water boiler. Uh, I think it's a great companion, once again, to a freeze-dried meal system. Whether you're backpacking in whatever scenario or if you're at home. And then finally, philosophy of use. I'll say gift. Yep. Give someone the freaking rocket ship, man. They'll love you for it. They'll be freaking out at first. And they open, they'll look at this box. I mean, would you know what this is? Hey. <laughs> Voice cracking. Hey, Merry Christmas. Here's your Kelly kettle. What? They're going to think it's a thermos. Doesn't it look like a thermos? They won't know. But if you have someone that goes outside, that can use this in their systems, or that just needs a good survival stove, dude, great gift item. Okay. That's philosophy of use. That's all I'm saying. And now we get into the downsides of the Kelly kettle. Okay. Now you may see in the video, by the way, that I did a no, no. And that is I actually <laughs> boiled water with a stopper in. <gasps> not fancy. It says not to do that. I know it does, but I am a product tester after all, right? Don't forget that. So I test products. I want to see what they're going to do. And I wanted to see if I boiled water with that stopper, like pop out and just freaking, I don't know, blow boiling water. Uh, first first and foremost, I will say uh, that it could, and I recommend just cooking the way they, they recommend in the manual, but I did not see that happen. <laughs> I tested it. It just didn't happen. I did see it seep out as the water boiled, and then it can actually become a self-extinguishing effect as the water drops down into the fire base, and then you lose your awesome flame, right? Not so good. So they say boil it with a stopper out. I recommend doing that. And once again, I want to tell you how amazed I am at how quickly this thing boils water. It does quite well. Okay, but that's a that's an upside. We're talking about the downsides. Um, I will say first, like you're seeing here, these are the pot supports. They don't come with the Kelly kettle. You have to order a cook set with it. So this is I'm sorry, not the cook set, but the pot supports. Those come separately. Right there. This one's for the base camp model. But that's so you can actually put a pot on top of here. We'll talk about that in a second. But we're talking about how messy it is and that's because you're burning a fire and you're going to have all the soot, the tar, and everything else that accompanies a campfire. Oh, but that's no big deal. Um, well, it depends on your perspective. To me, using stuff like this, modern, compact backpacking stoves, it kind of is a big deal because it creates more work for me when I get home. Okay, plain and simple. It just does. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I can't leave the pot supports. I'm not ever going to clean. I'll just leave the soot and the tar on. And by the way, you could coat these with like a liquid detergent or a bar soap. I did not do that. And it will make it easier to clean. And incidentally, these are made of aluminum, not stainless steel. And this is what I'm talking about, aluminum. It's really hard to get stuff off of it. And then when you do, it just scratches it up. And then those scratches hold more soot, dirt, and tar next time you take it out. But the whole stove is going to be dirty. It's smoky. Okay, because you're burning sticks and stuff down there. And this is actually cleaned out. That's cleaned. And this thing was pretty sooty when I was done with it. After every expedition, then I just started scrubbing it with like a Scotch Bright pad. Since it's stainless steel, it actually cleaned up pretty good. Once again, you could cut it with soap if you wanted it. But you're going to have to use a carry bag to come with it. Okay, and they do come with carry bags because otherwise everything in your pack is just going to get all sooty and dirty. This is just dirty, okay? Uh, downsides, we're talking. Uh, something I want to call China Syndrome. <laughs> I think I've made mention of this before in some other reviews. 
Uh, you don't have it with the MSR Pocket Rocket, and that is where the base of the stove gets so hot that as you're cooking on, on snow or ice, it wants to melt through to the center of the earth. <laughs> I'm exaggerating for making a point, obviously, but it could do totally do that, so you're going to have to make a base for this because this gets very hot. China Syndrome. It is a downside. The other one I've talked about already, and that is how tall it is. It is much taller than this one, of course, and that makes it more tipsy. You can knock it over, and yes, I did that. Or just as your cap is out, you walk past, you bump it, water seeps out and extinguishes your fire. That's a downside. Happens. It takes kindling work. You're going to have to do some kindling preparation, albeit simple. Yes, but it's you know, ongoing kindling work. You're going to have to feed it, stoke it. This that creates more prep too. time. I get the modern stove going much quicker than I do the pocket rocket. Dang. It's also not easily adjusted for cooking. Let's put those pot supports back in. Okay, and a cook set. Now this did not come with it, but it's a good, I don't know, just lightweight backpacking pan. I bought an REI about 20 years ago. But it sits up here like that, and you would say, oh man, that's a really sweet cooking arrangement, right? Um, not really, because one, you don't have that much heat coming up to the stove. That which you do is going to blacken your pot, get it dirty, more cleanup time, blah, blah, blah. It's really not that efficient. And more importantly, you can't adjust the flame easily because it's clear down here. Now, I know what you're thinking. I'm not fancy, take the freaking Kelly kettle off. You have that cool cook set. And in that cook set, you have the following. A little tiny cup, by the way, a pot grabber, a lid, which is right here. And then these things, which are cool. Great. Well, then fancy freaking just put that pot here, man, and you can cook over that, right? That's what you're thinking. Uh, you're actually correct. You can do that, and it will work. Uh, the problem with this pot specifically is that now I have less oxygen get in here, so it affects my flame and thus affects my heat source. I can use the one it came with, and that's better. See, it's open. It will heat it, but it's still hard to adjust the flame. And then when I want to put the Kelly kettle back on, you might have fuel or sticks sticking out, and you just have to finagle with it. So you need to, like, fire tend. Can you do it? Yes, you can but flame's not e easily adjusted. We're talking about the downsides, we're being honest. It's a downside, dude, just is. How about this? That's kind of bulky. Did I talk about that already? I talked about how tall it was, but when it ta we talk about compactability, I mean, the pocket rocket, and I'm just using this as an example. I mean, please, come on now, enough said. All right. This formally completes the downsides, ladies and gentlemen. Now we go into the upsides. One I've talked about already, and that is this thing works, and it works well. It boils water very fast, very cheaply, and that's a huge upside, is that you don't have to purchase a freaking $7 cartridge or whatever. You just grab some sticks. It's economical, and that in itself is a huge selling point for the Kelly Kettle. You have unlimited fuel. It's everywhere, and it's very durable can't speak, durable. Kelly Kettle does recommend you don't boil this thing dry because you can crack the seams on it. Always have water on the interior. But if you take care of it, you don't abuse it and run over it with your four by four, uh, it should last you generations. And simple, I showed you the construction, right? How about this? I don't wanna talk about this. If you go into a place where there's a fire restriction, voila, you have a mini fire pit already. I'm not even talking about boiling water. I'm just talking about hanging out and making a little tiny fire. Here's the, the fire base for the base camp. That's even better. So you can make a little fire in here. There's your air hole. And I didn't take out the grate for this, but you can get the idea. It's a self-contained fire pit, albeit very small. That is an upside. I like that. And from that fire pit, you can make charcoal. You can keep that going. You can transfer it into a larger campsite fire and it's protected from the elements, at least on this, you know, these sides. It's a really cool thing to have, a mini fire pit. You can use it in fire restricted areas. And then finally, I will say, uh, I think it's worth the money. When we're talking about upsides. Remember, you're not gonna be buying these all the time, right? You're just gonna be getting wood. You know, look on the top part of the screen there, and that's my recommended retailer for buying your Kelly Kettle. It's the lowest price I can possibly get to you. The lowest price. It boils water like crazy.
crazy. And actually, once you get that fire going and it's self-sustaining, you have a good charcoal base in it, it really boils fast. You can actually do cycles of water. So if you're running the trucker size, you can put water in it, boil it, you know, take care of everybody in your camp, and then pour some more in, and it's going to boil even faster since this is since this is preheated and you have fuel already going out. By the way, it says in the instructions when you lift this out, go to 90 degrees with your bale right here. So don't lift it like this because you're putting yourself over that scorch area, right? You want to do this. And yeah, I screwed that up while I was up there. Totally forgot about it. Learned the hard way. <laughs> hey, nothing fancy. You recommend the cooking kit? Uh, I, it depends. I would say probably yes. Just so you can get the grate right here. This is really cool to have. I never use these or the pot support. I have my own stuff. Like here's a freaking Snow Peak titanium cup. I use that with a Kelly Kelly. It worked great. Um, yeah, I would probably get it. But more importantly, these are the things you're going to be using. The fire base with your Kelly kettle. That will pretty much tell, take care of it. Don't boil it dry. Be careful of self-dousing your fire. I talked about that. And you probably want to take the stopper out when you boil. And then finally, after you're done with it, dry it out before storing. That seems like common sense, but I bet you a lot of people forgot to do that. And now you've got a mildewy or stinky Kelly kettle. And now you got to figure out how to clean that. You can't really get inside of it to clean it because it's circular. You know, it's around the circumference of the chimney. Go. Totally worth the money. Great survival stove, really. Great survival, I should say, long distance, long range stove for the reason we've talked about. I love this thing. There's a reason why it's been around a long time, and I'm more than happy to get the word out for your systems on this cool looking 1950s rocket ship. <laughs> That's a nut and fancy review. See ya.